usually I pack enough lunch for myself and one other person and I usually have you know an idea of, of who I planned on on giving that meal to often I have my equipment in the middle of the sidewalk and then it would need to be protected so that I could both work and not you know lose my equipment and you know and so there was you know particular long-term homeless people that that would be happy to do that in exchange for you know a sandwich every day that you know somebody hadn't already fed them and so when that particular individual um didn't eat my sandwich i would look around and give it to to one of the the new arrivals and that was still looking like you know they might be employable and you know and and many of those were very skilled workers um and, and the one that i i really like i feel like i've messed up um you know i went over and and i had had actually half half of a had gotten a foot long um subway sandwich back when you know it was a five dollar foot long and and you know there's a, a couple there sitting on the curb at, at coleman dock and it's like would either of you like this sandwich and and they said yes what is it and i went um yeah one of the chicken ones with like all of the vegetables they had available on it pretty much and and you know and so the, the woman started eating the eating the sandwich and and the guy says you know you know, can can you just tell us how to get home? And and they were from the haulers of Tennessee. And, you know, can you just help us figure out how to get home? And so I talked to him and, and he was it was it was amazing. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll help you help I can I know somebody that's that's needing um needing a a laborer on their mason crew. And you know, and his tools have been stolen, and and they've been here for I don't know, a couple of days, and and they'd gone down to, and they weren't even, they weren't begging, and I go to the, the active beggars, and you know, and and you know, and and I gave him a number of, of somebody that was looking for for somebody to you know. Run the vibrator and wash off form parts, and you know, brush them off with a wire brush, and and uh, and and then of course you know I didn't have a phone because you know that had been stolen, and you know so I couldn't get on my company cell and and you know make the phone call and 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 off they go. And as I'm walking away, I went, I actually know somebody who desperately needs a finisher. Um, like, um, hmm, I just got this really skilled mason. You know, I talked to him a little bit. I, you know, from what projects he's done. He's really skilled mason, a laborer's job. And yeah, and I actually have like somebody that needed a mason. And oh, and I'd said, I don't know any of like only like four days before. But, you know, most of the time when I, you know, was able to connect people to work, it just, felt good and I you know I don't really remember those because you know it was like that was another one as opposed to the like oh yeah I just messed that up but you know it wasn't my job to find him a concrete finisher but hence why it wasn't on my mind but the the other you know one that really really kind of sticks with me is a guy that came out from Utah and he was you know this really plain cut looking you know, blonde kid, and you know, and, and he's 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 there at at right next to one of my my places that I worked almost every day. You know, so I go and I set up my equipment, and and you know, and he's got a new cardboard sign that says says you know I just want to go home. You know, need fifty eight dollars and nineteen cents or whatever for you know my greyhound fair and and I'm like, well you know where are you from and he said where he was from in utah and and i went well you know 
you can just take the city bus out to Issaquah and then, you know, find yourself a new marketing fan and write down your hometown in Utah and just, you know, stand at this gas station with that sign and, and you'll get somebody that's, you know, going out 90 and, and when they get to the, the state route 84 goes to interstate 84 and, you know, get to 84 and they'll take you over to 84 and they'll take you home. And, you know, and it was fairly late in the day. Um, it was probably 8 p.m. And, you know, bus leaves at 620 from, you know, Union Station. And, you know, he left and he was, he was thrilled just to be able to leave. And he did, a, you know, he was, he was in a good spot. He had, you know, a road decking over, overhead. He had ivy underneath them. It was, you know, it was a little lumpy and bumpy, but it wasn't, you know, the cliffs you should be camping on. And, you know, you know, it's only been a few days. You know, we hadn't even really reached hungry yet. He found the soup kitchen. Um, and he was just desperate to leave. And that, yeah, oh, another one come to mind. Um, you know, I'm, I'm there. I'm behind the construction fence, and and you know, I'm busily doing my my thing. And and one of the junkies jump off this little pony wall and, and attack this guy and knocked him over and, and, uh, you know, and then she ran off. Um, she tried to, you know, tried to steal his cell phone. Um, he was quite a bit bigger than her. He managed to hang on to his cell phone. And, and then I, and, and, you know, and he stands up and I'm like, you, you all right, dude? And, and he's like, he's like, I just want to go home. And I'm like, well, you know, where's home? And, and he goes, you know, I just want to go home. I'm like, yeah, I heard you the first time. And he goes, if I could just charge my phone, then, and I could call my sister and she would get me Greyhound fare and I could go home. And I'm like, just hand me your phone, dude. And it had the same charger as mine my work cell and you know when I plugged it into the spider and you know and he stood there on the other side of the fence staring at it on the other side of the fence where I can't get to it. And you know and when I got done working there I'm like like you know handed it back to him and I was like like no anything else and and, and he opened it up and as I'm you know walking off he's calling his sister and you know I never saw him again. And that's the reality for, you know, I mean, I don't know how long he's been there, but, you know, he, he, he stunk to high heaven like most of them. And, you know, it's, it's hard because once you get to a certain point of filthy, you're no longer welcome to go inside and use, use the facilities and, you know, and, and you know, it's just like, you know, it's just more of the, the homeless rubble that, you know, decorate our city. And, you know, so, so stay, stay ahead of the curve, stay clean. Um, know that you're going to be judged harder than, you know, than anybody else coming to work in the morning. You know, somebody else might be able to come to work still wearing yesterday's clothes and, looking like, yeah, they got six hours sleep because, you know, they got six hours sleep sleeping in their truck between shifts. And, you know, and, and it'll be fine. But, you know, you do that every night. Well, you no longer, you know, have three days of stink on you. You have three weeks of stink on you. And you're just not just an overtired construction worker that hasn't gone home because you haven't had enough time between shifts to drive home, take a shower, and drive back, 